Hi everyone, my name is King IV, and this is an introduction to Idea Data Analysis by Caseware. And this is an updated version of the lessons I recorded, I believe March, April 2014, where I demonstrated how to use the Idea Data Analysis software using in version 9. This is an updated version, not only based off the version, I'm using version 10 now, which is a very, which got released about a month and a half ago, which was a major upgrade. I'm very happy with uh, the many changes that IDEA has made. Uh, but it's also accumulation of all the knowledge I've obtained uh, since that March, April 2014. So I've learned a lot more about the software and a lot more about different approaches. So I'm hoping to share these lessons uh, with you. So a little bit more about these lessons. So I am using version 10.0. Dot zero one dot four thirty two bit for for these videos, and this is a very early re release of the ten version ten software. So if you are watching this in the distant future, uh, there may have been some improvements or updates. I'm certainly sure that there will be, uh, but the base of it should be still applicable. If you are using an early version of, of version, so for example version nine, I'll include a little card caption here. Uh, so that you can actually go check out those videos because they may be a little bit more applicable even though things are fairly similar so you should be able to understand. I also teach computer systems auditing and business analytics at the University of Waterloo and that includes teaching the IDEA software and we go through uh, quite a extensive training program in in these classes. And these videos are meant to be an introductory set lesson, set of lessons and there are many ways to perform these tasks in different orders but I'm just going to show you the way that I prefer but feel free to use the method that, that you like. And all the data analysis files can be found on this link bit.ly bit slash idea data and you can feel free to download any of the source data or data sets that we're going to be using in these various lessons. So a really useful way of interacting and follow along and I highly recommend that you do follow along. So a little bit more is uh, these are the lessons that we're going to cover. So today's lesson we're on the idea software. We're just doing an intro. We're going to walk through the software, talk about the different interfaces, components, uh, how to create a new project. And then we'll leave it for, for there to, for the following lessons, including importing data, which is getting data into the software. Uh, we're going to talk about categorizing data, relating data, extracting data, creating and modifying fields, which is very important, exploring the data. We're going to talk about the new visualization components, including how to do visualization and discovery, which I think are, are really useful and I think will only get better with time. And we're going to talk about some statistical analysis uh, that can be performed, simple regressions, uh, error components, and, and whatnot. So enough of talking about in prepping for these lessons, let's go ahead and take a look at, at the IDEA software. So the IDEA software should look like something like this if you're using version 10. If you're using an early version, it may look slightly differently, uh, but this should essentially be what it looks like. I'm just going to walk through this interface really quickly. Uh, so the, the we're on the home component, and you'll see here the file explorer, which will list out the various databases. In this case, so right now I have listed out the the sample file that comes with the IDEA software. And you can see each of these components represents a different database of uh, files. And you'll see here, you can click around the top to, to alternate between those two. And uh, when you're when you're in a particular file, what you can also do is not only take a look at the data, but you can also take a look at history, which will tell you who actually imported it. So you can see Allison Manning, who's one of my contacts at Caseware, actually went and imported this file. You can also take a look at when it was imported. So you can see August 31st, 2015, which is four months, about four months ago, uh, where the files were stored. So you can see here she has an e-drive, analytics, etc., etc. You can see the data sources, the sheet name, the number of records. You can see it's quite detailed. And this is really useful uh, as you go and share and other people review your work, they can understand the steps that you took. And also for next year, if you're redoing the same analysis as someone else and you, they're not around for, for whatever reason, uh, you can definitely check out the, the history here. You can also take a look at field statistics, which gives you some information around if there's any numerics, 
if there's any dates in this case there's not times and gives you some quick characteristics including the net value absolute value talks about the positive values talks about the number of records the average value so you can click on for example the minimum value and I'll create this extraction so you can actually go and take a look it's a really quick way of diagnosing your data and it's really important probably one of the very first steps that I recommend every single time you import your data is to run field statistics to make sure that there aren't any errors in your data or that you have imported anything correctly or that you made any incorrect assumptions around your data or that you've received incorrect data in the first place so uh, really important and as well you can do control totals to be honest i don't use control totals that often but they are useful sometimes to see the total you can take a screenshot of this i actually prefer using field because i think not only reconciling the total is really important but also looking at other components as well you can use criteria to filter down data so for example and maybe i want salary that's greater than oh greater than ten thousand you can click on here then it'll filter down the data set uh, it looks like every, all the salaries are greater than 10,000. Underestimating how much people make. You can click on here. And then you can see here, now it's filtered down to 38 of 51 records. And as well, you can remove the... But we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into the equation editor and how to define and create new fields. So moving on. Uh, from from this main area, which is where you can do most of your analysis. You talk about project overview, which shows you a graphical interface of your current project. So you can see here all the different data files, all the different ones. Obviously, it's a pretty simple one, so there's nothing too much to see, but you can also do it from this way to see when they were timestamped, when they were created, and whatnot. Uh, you talk about creating a new project, so we're actually going to do that right now. So we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this tutorial. And you press OK. And then click Yes. And then if you go to, and this will be slightly differently, slightly different location depending on where your files are. So for example, here, my it's in my documents, my idea documents. And you want to see this new folder called tutorial, which is the project. And then here you'll see a whole bunch of different folders uh, that you can include, including the visualizations, source files, Spark analyzer, results, etc., etc. The main one that you need to be concerned about is, at least in this introduction set of lessons, is the source files. This is where you're going to dump all the files that are, are in that are in the the link that I included at the beginning. So I'm just going to dump them there. So we can worry about importing data a little bit later. So that's a, that's a good way. If you want to navigate to another project, you click on select and it'll show you various projects when they were created. Uh, you can also recover archives properties. We usually don't deal with too much with that. Uh, you can talk, you can, this is going to be talking about importing data. So you can either do it from desktop or the idea server, talk about exporting data. So getting data out of idea into usually the format is Excel, but it could be accessed. It can be a number of different formats. Uh, idea server, which we're not going to talk too much about. The passport, which is actually a really new, cool new function. So you can take a look here. You can talk about um, marketplace apps, custom functions, documentation, videos, and I think all of these actually just lead to uh, a new window uh, on your on the internet. So it just brings you, opens up your browser, and, and leads you to those ones. So really a great way, especially if you're stuck, you don't know what to do. You can take a look at the forum, ask questions, search the forum. It's uh, likely that the answer is already there or someone can certainly help you. And Idea Support's been really great uh, with uh, supporting users based off what, what I've seen. You can also go to the data data ribbon, which is the script is very similar to, to Windows, so it's a very familiar function. Uh, to be honest, I don't spend too much time here. The only real time I spend here is def when I go ahead and define some fields. Uh, you can also do some sorting here. But really, most of the actions going to be occurred on this analysis tab, which we'll dive into as we get into our, our analysis. So you can talk about rerunning tasks. So if you've done something, you put a wrong parameter. So for example, in that criteria, I put the wrong number. I could have, instead of clicking there, I could click rerun. You join something wrong, you can certainly use that rerun button. And it's a really handy and neat feature. Uh, here, it talks about extraction. 
exploring, categorize, relating, which I'm sure you saw all related to to uh, the titles of upcoming lessons, all really useful, really interesting. Uh, we talk about sampling, which is again a very powerful and useful technique, especially if you're an auditor that wants to apply analytics to to your audit. When you talk about visualization, I don't want to dive too much into this because uh, we'll get into this, but two really neat ways of approaching it. One is discover where the where case where it uses previous intelligence is discussions with professionals and its experience to auto create some dashboards which i think are interesting and are, will only get better over time and or you can create your own visualization and your own data uh view again i almost never use this just because i use the views out of the box but if you wanted to you can certainly change how things look thousand separators currencies uh etc etc so really useful way of of customizing your view but to be honest i don't use it too much but other people may appreciate it uh, macros which are really interesting macros are are similar to to vba it's actually based off of vba and our visual basic uh similar to excel macros they're, they're very useful uh, I would say not really recommended for beginners, uh, but there are some useful ways you can record your own macros, especially u especially useful if you are using the same function over and over again. But I recommend that you really learn how to use the IDS software before you get into macros. But macros are a really great way to save a lot of time and effort, especially if you're dealing with a very complicated task or tasks that you're running over and over again. Uh, Smart Analyzer, we won't get into that. Uh, too much just because it's a little bit more advanced, uh, but it's an excellent way of leveraging some of the knowledge and some of the work that Caseware has already done to apply it to, to your files and to your particular situation. So again, this is Caseware idea, our idea Caseware, idea by Caseware, version 10, it's brand new software. And I'm really looking forward to teaching you guys how to utilize and best best take advantage of the software that you have in hand again if you have an earlier version i'll include a link uh, below in the description where you can take a look at the previous lessons if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave it in the comment section below and i look forward to speaking to you next time thank you